Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be talking to you about Wikimedia projects for authority control, specifically using Wikibase and data from Wikidata to help manage and enrich name authority records at the National Library of Wales. Now, those of you that work in archives might be familiar with this. This is a card catalogue in our collections at the National Library of Wales. So this is an old school system for cataloguing our archives. But like modern systems, it, it was aimed at making it as easy as possible for people to find what they needed within collections in, in a cultural institution, be that by subject, by collection or by personal name. And for many years now, libraries and archives have used name authority to standardise the way we record names of individuals described in our records. And in a digital setting, these authority files can be used to link all occurrences of names together so that we know all the books written by an author or all the mentions of a person in an archive, because each time their name should be given in exactly the same form. Um, however, as you can see, these records tend to be short on detail. It's usually enough information to identify a person, but users have to look elsewhere to find more information about uh, these subjects. Now, we've mostly ditched the trusty card catalogue for electronic catalogues these days, um, which can be used online by anyone. But these systems are still not perfect, even when we use name authority. Every organisation has its own system, their own silo, if you like, which is often different to others. And even within an institution, data is broken down into further silos. So in this example, we've um, worked out that this particular John Jones has more than one authority records and duplicates are common as systems have been merged over time, for example, and people have just failed to identify that uh, this is a John Jones that already has an authority file. So we started by trying to reconcile our own data and identify when the same people appeared with more than one identifier or within different um, collection areas in, in our archives. And then what we did is start aligning that data to Wikidata. So trying to find out if the people that our authority records describe are also in Wikidata. And there's lots of motivation for doing that. So in creating that alignment with Wikidata, we create a common identifier that helps pull all our different IDs for a person together. But you also get access to all the information that Wikidata holds, all the extra biographical data, the links to Wikipedia articles, the links to images, uh, portraits for people on Wikimedia Commons, all the other identifiers, and I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later on, but also the infrastructure of Wikidata, the query service, all the tools that it has the, uh, for visualising the data, uh, the API, which enables you to kind of take uh, data en masse from Wikidata and reuse it uh, in lots of different ways. So there's lots of motivations that we saw for aligning our authority records to Wikidata. So how did we go about doing this alignment? Well, the first step was to extract the data from the authority records. Um, we got them in a, a spreadsheet, tidied them up as much as possible, separated the names into forename and surname, pulled out the dates because they're really useful uh, when it comes to reconciling. And then we took that data and we moved it into OpenRefine. So if you haven't heard of OpenRefine, it's a great program for working with uh, messy data and making connections between different data sets. And it has Wikidata compatibility built in. So you're able to use it um, to, it'll suggest matches on Wikidata automatically based on the data that you provide it. And that was really good for matching a good chunk um, of records to start with. As you can imagine, as time went on, um, it got harder and harder to make matches when you have hundreds of different John Joneses with very little data. Um, it's very difficult to to make those matches with any confidence with the amount of data that we have in our authority records. 
So often um, being certain about a match meant checking the Wikidata item, checking our catalog entries to see if there was any more context for the authority record in the catalog entries themselves, um, and then making a judgment on whether um, a match was definite or not. So this really took um, a lot of time. It's also worth mentioning that we've utilized AI to help uh, with this project as well. So ChatGPT is brilliant for helping non-coders write code and that kind of thing. Uh, it also has a Google Sheets add-on and you can see that being used here. So we can ask it things like extract the first word from these strings uh, and it will simply do that. Uh, and this has saved us a lot of time actually in helping sort of uh, tidy up this data and, and get it ready for processing. So you can see it's just going to load um, all of those uh, first words. So this kind of functionality is really useful. You can also ask it to do kind of named entity recognition. So here I've asked it to extract place names from the string so that we can separate places from the names within the name authority strings. Um, and again, it was able to do that um, fairly easily. And we can then take that place name data, for example, and we can search Wikidata and um, it makes it a lot easier for us to align different elements from within this data to Wikidata. So as a result of all this reconciliation work with Wikidata, this is the kind of level of data that we now have for a lot of people in our collections. So this is much richer data than you saw in those um, authority records early on. And, and this is linked data, so we can link off to all that extra data about someone's family connections, about their place of birth or their occupation to really understand the, the data that we have and to understand the people that um, exist within our archives. We've managed to align around 15,000 authority records so far from our collections to Wikidata, and that's around half of the total number of people we have authority records for. So there's some way to go, but as we kind of get further into this process, it looks like it might not actually be possible to align all these records um, or even create items for all these people because there simply isn't enough data there for some of them. Now immediately we've been able to see some other really great advantages of having aligned our data to Wikidata. So firstly you can use the query service to do all sorts of interesting um, queries on the data and visualizations. So here for example we can see the um, frequency of different occupations amongst the people in our collections. Um, so we have things like um, 4,300 politicians, they're the most uh, popular, 3,300 writers, uh, right down to uh, smaller groups of people. We have 48 archivists in our archives, uh, according to Wikidata. And then we have the external identifiers, which I touched on early on, and that's um, a really important part of our motivation for doing this. So we're not the only organization sh aligning our data to Wikidata in this way. I'm sure you're aware your organizations might be doing the same. But what this means is that connect connections form between different collections across institutions all around the world. So if a person uh, appears in an archive in uh, Brazil and also in the National Library of Wales collections, those two things become linked together through those identifiers on the Wikidata items. And the scale of this is really quite huge. So if you take someone like Geoffrey Chaucer, um, you can see these are all the external identifiers attached to that person. There are lots of them. So for example, this includes 26 national libraries, uh, 12 websites, 10 smaller libraries, eight art museums, and then you have other data aggregators such as VIAF, Freebase, Library of Congress, Open Library. All their IDs are, are gathered together in Wikidata, which is acting as this kind of central hub um, for identifiers across collections. So sharing our data to Wikidata helps us connect to this much wider network um, of linked open data. 
So the next step for us, once you've done that alignment to Wikidata, was actually to start developing our own Wikibase. So Wikibase is the software that powers Wikidata, and it provides us with an opportunity to create our own mini Wikidata, essentially, for the data that's relevant to us. Um, and we, we used Wikibase Cloud, so it's it's hosted for free. We didn't have to do all the technical setup. It comes as a prepackaged Wikibase uh, that's just empty and ready to use. Now, some of you might be asking, uh, why didn't we just use Wikidata? Why did we need to take that extra step and create a Wikibase? Well, there's a number of different uh, reasons for that. Firstly, as we start thinking about round tripping this data and including IDs in our catalog, for example, um, our archivists um, and curators need um, some confidence that that data is consistent, that it's not going to be changed and that they have some control over the quality of that data. So in that respect, having our own wiki base creates a space where we can curate and um, quality check the data that's coming from Wikidata. It's a kind of bridge between fully linked open data and our own catalog. Um, secondly is we want something fully bilingual. Part of the brief for this project was to make sure that um, whatever data set we created here was fully usable in English or Welsh. And whilst a lot of that Welsh exists in Wikidata, creating a smaller managed environment with a limited focused ontology made it much easier for us to ensure that all the relevant data could be translated and available in Welsh. Um, and thirdly, Wikidata doesn't always allow us to express our data in the way that we want to. So for example, on Wikidata, um, it's not generally accepted that you can use Welsh as a nationality. You have to use British. Um, but we are dealing with a collection of data about Welsh people. So we wanted to be able to express that people were Welsh as their um, nationality rather than British. We also wanted to use the standardised forms of Welsh place names that come from the Welsh Language Commission, for example. Um, and they sometimes differ from the information that's available on Wikidata. It also means we can sort of customise our ontology, make it much simpler for um, researchers to understand and query because it's focused solely on people and places uh, associated with those people. And finally, the Wikibase gives us a hub where we can uh, send our users and our researchers where they can and not only search and access specifically the data related to our collection without us having to spend lots of money developing a, a fancy interface, um, but it also means that we can grant access to researchers for specific projects who can go in um, and uh, enrich certain elements of the data within that data set. So the Wikibase obviously allows you to search manually for people, uh, just like Wikidata, but uh, it also has its own Sparkle query service, which works exactly like the Wikidata query service. So we can create these kind of visualizations like this one uh, that looks at everyone with the surname Jones and their family connections. And we've tried to add as much uh, detail in the data as possible about family connections. So parents, children, sisters, brothers, um, and that's either come from Wikidata or from our catalogue data itself in order to start finding these connections that are clearly there between lots of different people within our collections. And you'll notice that there's lots of images of people contained in this visualisation. And that's because as long as we uh, link to media on Wikimedia Commons like you would in Wikidata in our own Wikibase, then our query service can still pull in that data. And you can even write queries that pull in additional information that you might not have in your Wikibase from Wikidata. And that works as long as the QID from Wikidata is stored as a statement on your Wikibase items. So that allows you to do what a kind of federated 
uh, query across your Wikibase and Wikidata. So these relationships between people and places can also be expressed through that query service um, as maps, for example, or family trees. So in this family tree, you can see a group, a family grouping, where every member of that family has archives in the National Library of Wales. But until we created this uh, linked data from the name authorities, we had no way programmatically of knowing that there was a relationship between all these people. And some of these family trees can be huge. So in this example, we have uh, Jane Asher, actress and former fiance of Paul McCartney. And you can see that uh, Wikidata actually records her family tree in a direct line all the way back to Owain Glyndwr, who was a 13th century Prince of Wales, the last Prince of Wales. Um, and actually the family tree continues all the way back in an unbroken line as far as uh, 500 AD. So as more and more organizations and people are adding data to Wikidata, some of these family groupings are becoming huge. And we're not just using the Wikibase to um, build these connections between things within our own collection. We're also creating firm links between cultural organizations within Wales. So for example, we've been aligning um, place names with the standardized forms of the Welsh Language Commission. We've also been adding IDs for listed buildings and built heritage um, from CADU and the Royal Commission on Ancient and Historical Monuments of Wales. So all these different um, cultural organizations in Wales, their collections are becoming linked together. So if someone whose archives are at the National Library of Wales was born uh, in a listed building, we are combining that data together so that we can have it in uh, one central place and we can kind of understand the relationship between people and their buildings. So this visualization shows owners of um, country estates, for example, and then the properties that were part of those estates. Um, so this is, is, is tying lots of different collections together. So our hope is over time that this will become more and more embedded into our workflows at the National Library so that when new name authorities are created, they're automatically developed as linked open data. If we want to add the IDs from this database into our authority records in the catalogue to create that bridge with Wikidata, and we want to encourage other organisations and researchers in Wales to consider sharing data and helping us develop this resource so that we can start pulling all our collections together, tearing down those silos so that our users can discover these connections that exist across all our cultural heritage institutions. Jelkan Vaud, thank you so much for listening. Um, please feel free to check out our Wikibase and see what you think. Um, and my contact details are there as well. If anyone would like to, to reach out for a chat, um, I'd be happy to hear from you. Thank you very much.